what's up scrappy peeps it's Del from Mickey Quill and today I'm scrapping this photo of this little baldy and Aaron uh, I'm using the August scrapbooking kits from Citrus Twist as well as the embellishment add-on kit um, and I had a little bit of fun with some pattern paper background which you know if you're a long time inklet is way out of my comfort zone but I'm trying to experiment with it and embrace it a little bit uh, and luckily this month's kit was filled with kind of a, a collection that I, f I feel more comfortable with. Uh, the crepe paper collections always seem to be up my alley and so I felt a little bit more confident using the papers um, and the colour tones of this month's kit were very blue, red, you know, neutrally colours so I, I could handle it, I could handle it. Uh, so here I'm going through and immediately I wanted to use that cherry paper. I wanted to use it for a couple of reasons. One, I don't typically scrap a, with red as an embellishment feature colour, I guess you could say. This is the pattern paper add-on um, as well. I, I typically don't, I, I lean more towards the softer tones like pinks and corals rather than bright red and I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to use it while the subject of my photo is so red. Uh, Aaron's nan, Archie's great nan, made him this beautiful little cardigan which I absolutely love and the look on his face is just priceless here. I actually got this photo printed onto a canvas for Aaron's nan um, from, I'm pretty, was that Mother's Day or Christmas? one or the other uh, and just because he looks so happy and proud to be wearing his his little grown-up cardigan uh, so here I'm figuring out what I want to do and I was I really wanted to use the music paper why who knows but I decided to um, make my title work with the music paper so you'll see that in a little while that the title makes the music paper seem appropriate and originally I print, I cut a nine by 12 piece of that cherry paper and I was going to use that as my background. But then I thought of just having a little piece of it peeking through and having most of my layout be on this music paper. So I'm using the leftover strip, which is a three by 12 inch strip. And I'll save the nine by 12 piece for another day because that's the size that I scrapbook in mainly. Uh, and so I've got these two bits of paper and I used a Fiskars, it's an old Fiskars notepad punch. Um, if you're interested in notepad punch, there's tons out there, just search your local craft stores. And then I grabbed a piece of white, just plain white, card stocky type paper that I had lying around because I wanted just a little bit of there was a lot of pattern going on here a lot of pattern and I just needed something to kind of help neutralize the situation I guess you could say so I know that I want to have my photo matted in that blue and white square graph type print in the background there and I was also going to use that in the background, but decide not to just to have it as a matting piece. So here I wanted to have my, uh, that little white piece of plain paper poke out the side here. And so I've got my ruler and I'm doing this in a very dodgy way, but really, if you watch my videos, would you expect anything else? I'm, I'm cutting corners here and to make sure that it stays nine by 12, so nine inches across, I'm just using my ruler and kind of positioning the papers very haphazardly and trying to make it work. It's It turned out a little bit wonky, but that was okay. I could kind of lift it up, retape it, try again. Uh, but if you are doing this at home and have a cutting mat, that's a much easier way to do it but learn from my mistakes peeps that's what I'm here for so I stuck that piece down and then of course it it freaking stuck to the bottom of the other page and then it was wonky so I just cut it off and no one will know any different we're all good so then it's time to stick down and mat my picture and there was this bit of it kind of I don't know if it's vellum or if it's um 
tissuey type substance. It was a piece of, I think it's vellum. It's just a very shiny vellum. I'm used to a matte finish. Uh, so that was included in the kit. So I thought, hey, let's stick you on there just to give you a little bit of extra non-papery type texture. And then I'm going to stick it onto this graph piece of paper. If you want to know the names and the like what collection, um, this one's a pink fresh paper, I just saw the logo. Uh, but if you do want to know the names, all the info's over on the Citrus Twist um, shop. You can have a look at the kits and have a look at what papers were included for this month. Here I had a bit of sticky uh, tape gun residue over there. And so I'm just using some washi and sticking it over the top just so that a, it doesn't stick to my workspace, but B, when I put it in the album, it also doesn't stick to the pre, like the page behind it. So then I get the black paint and I'm like, right, this page needs some black. It needs some darkening. So I just ver I figure out where I want my photo and I very roughly kind of pop it out. I love the music paper, but it was so much music. It was very music-y which is ironic because that's what you would expect from a sheet of music scrapbooking paper. But it was a little too music-y for me. Uh, so I just went through with my Black Dilutions Don't Panic Peeps. It works out in the end. This is the ugly stage. Every time you use mixed media on a scrapbooking page, you get an ugly stage. And sometimes the ugly stage can be very long and it can hang around for a while. And sometimes it's quite brief. But bear with it, you've got, to, you've got to get through it to the other side. So then I decide that it was still too papery and so I need a little bit more texture. I grab some white tissue paper from my stash and please don't lecture me about the amount of tape that I use. I use a lot of tape because we live in rental houses. The temperature differences over where I live in Australia um, are very different. We have mold issues in the houses we live in. It's very wet. Uh, and so I've had lots of things fall out of my scrapbooks because there's not enough uh, glue to hold them in the wet condensated houses that we live in. So then I'm sticking this one down with some double-sided tape because Tape Runner does not like tissue paper. If you are new to using Tape Runner, do not use it on tissue paper, doilies, um, anything that is, rips really easily. So I'm sticking this down and I was tossing up with my title at this point whether I wanted to just do You Make My Heart Sing and just use some um, alphas from my stash. But then this little love you just was, was calling me. And I think it was because of that bright red. It's got that bright red color in it. And I don't, I don't often um, gravitate be t b uh, towards multicolored alphas and so I thought I if I had an inkling to use this title I should do it now before it gets to the point where I'm just over it and I don't want to use it anymore so I think that's a tip if you're it's very tempting to use all of your the best and the favorite things on the first layout that you do that's I think that's my problem when I create things from a kit the first layout or the first page like project life page takes forever because I want to try and include all of my favorite things on the one page but I've kind of got to stop myself and say look if you pile them all on it's not going to look as beautiful as it could if you just selected a couple had more of a focus on them and spread them across several pages and then you could see your most favorite pieces across several pages and it's here with this bunny so this little bunny is gorgeous it says hello darling and it looks like Frida and I just I wanted to use it so badly and then this bunny and I wanted to use that too and it just it was getting too much. It was just getting to be too, too much. And so in the end, I decide not to use it and to just kind of embrace the less is more. Um, so if you ever feel overwhelmed with your first layout that you do using a kit, just take a step back and try. I don't know where I thought I was going to stick those ruffles, by the way. Uh, just take a step back and see 
if you can make it stretch out a little bit further than just putting all of the pretty things on the first page. And you can see there, I even got rid of that uh, rabbit because I, it was giant. It was really big and the crepe paper, and I've talked about it before, crepe paper ephemera pieces are getting even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> they're just getting bigger and bigger um, but I yeah, I've decided I leave that for another layout so here I thought mm, I don't usually do butterflies but something is calling me to use that bright blue butterfly and I think it was a combination of the letter O in my title was the same color blue and then the navy of the background paper and there also seemed to be a bit of a blue tinge behind Aaron on his computer screen and it just seemed to work. So I decided, like I said before, with that Love You title, if it's something that isn't perhaps your your go-to, um, like your go-to sticker or embellishment or font that you always use and you actually get the urge to try it, go for it, try it, because otherwise it will pass and it'll just stay in your stash. So this butterf these two butterflies are lucky they got let out of the, the sticker sheet today. I used my Sharpie uh, white just paint pen and I just put You Make My Heart Sing because that tied in using the music paper. And then I'm adding a little tiny word phrase from the sticker sheet and some journaling. And I decided to staple it on because there wasn't much, um, there was the glittery, oh no, I guess there is a lot of texture on here, but I just wanted more texture. <laughs> I'm using my Pilot G2 pen and just adding some journaling here. Um, I always try to say the names of things in my videos because I know that people don't watch every single video. You should, there's lots of videos. Um, but I get a lot of questions about just the basic supplies that I use and I do try to name them in each video. So if you're a, an ongoing inklet, thanks for your amazing support. And I'm sorry you have to hear that every single time, um, but it just saves me uh, replying to 50 comments asking what pen that is. I'm using some of the gold glitter hearts that were included in the uh, scrapbooking kit and they're beautiful. How am I going to uh, how am I going to not hoard those? That's going to be a problem. I'm using my Uniball Signo Broad white pen and I'm just adding a few little doodly bits. I've been really enjoying adding little little doodly bits to my not only my art journal pages but my scrapbook pages as well uh, and I've just been enjoying the the look that they they give I also do some hardy shining in a moment and it's not gold <gasps> shock horror it it's not gold it's probably my second favorite hardy shine which I don't use enough which is the navy so shake 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 shake, shake your hardy shine shake your heart shine and then I've got to shake it for a really long time because this navy I don't know what it is but the formula in it is very glunky yep that's a new word glunky it's a cross between like clumpy and just not nice and it the the powder at the bottom no matter how hard you shake it it just stays there so and when you split it's a we I don't know what it is but when you splatter it it only splatters tiny little splats it doesn't do big droplets which is a beautiful look it's just a very strange bottle I think I might have a, a, a bit of a a weird bottle um but we're almost finished and then I decided to go for doodly border so I, I just thought that it needed something and instead of doing the doodly border around the entire layout, I just focus it around uh, the music paper, which is a nice effect if you want to try something different with your doodly borders in your scrapbooking. Um, but that's it for this layout today. Thanks so much for watching guys. And I just want to say a huge thank you for those people who give my videos a thumbs up. It really does help my channel out and it helps it get discovered by new inklets that haven't um, come over to the inky community um, so just a huge thank you to you guys because it really does help me out and it also it makes days that are a bit tough or a bit glum seem happier because you get the feedback that people really do enjoy seeing what I'm creating so big thank you to you guys if you'd like to see some more close-up photos you can have a look at the Citrus Twist blog and I'll see you with another video oh my voice is gone I'll see you with another video very soon bye